Imagine this. It's a normal Tuesday afternoon in Metro Manila. Thirteen million people are going about their day, commuting in traffic, working in offices, shopping in malls, kids in school. Then, without warning, the ground starts to shake. Not the gentle rolling you might feel from a distant earthquake. This is violent, sudden, powerful. Buildings sway, glass shatters, roads crack open. In 60 seconds, everything changes. This is not a movie. This is what FIVOLX, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, says will happen when the Marikina Valley Fault ruptures with a magnitude 7.2 earthquake. They call it the big one. And it could happen today, tomorrow, or 10 years from now. But it will happen. This is the Marikina Valley Fault, Metro Manila's greatest threat, and the earthquake that could kill 34,000 people in minutes. The Marikina Valley Fault is a 100-kilometer active fault line that runs through Metro Manila and nearby provinces. It cuts through the eastern side of the metropolis, passing through, or dangerously close to, some of the most densely populated cities in the Philippines. Quezon City, Marikina, Pasig, Taguig, Muntinlupa, parts of Rizal province. All of them sit directly on or near the fault line. But here's what makes it terrifying. It doesn't just threaten those areas. A major earthquake on the Marikina Valley Fault would affect all of Metro Manila. Every city, every municipality, 13 million people. The fault is what geologists call a strike-slip fault. Unlike subduction zones, where one plate dives beneath another, strike-slip faults involve two plates sliding horizontally past each other. Think of it like two massive blocks of earth grinding against each other. They're locked together by friction. Pressure builds over decades or centuries. Then suddenly, catastrophically, they slip. When that happens, the ground doesn't just shake vertically. It shifts horizontally. Roads split apart. Buildings built across the fault line are literally torn in half. Infrastructure fails instantly. Five Oaks has been warning about this for years. They've mapped the fault. They've studied the historical record. They've run computer simulations. Their conclusion? The Marikina Valley Fault is capable of producing a magnitude 7.2 earthquake, and when it does, the consequences will be catastrophic. Magnitude 7.2 doesn't sound that different from magnitude 6.0 or 7.0, but earthquake magnitude is logarithmic. Each whole number increase represents about 32 times more energy released. A magnitude 7.2 earthquake releases roughly 1,000 times more energy than a magnitude 5.2 earthquake. To put it in perspective, the 1990 Luzon earthquake that devastated Baguio and central Luzon was magnitude 7.7. .7. It killed over 1,600 people and caused billions in damage. And that was in a less densely populated area than Metro Manila. The 2013 Bohol earthquake was magnitude 7.2, the same strength expected from the Marikina Valley Fault. It killed over 200 people and destroyed historic churches and infrastructure. And Bohol's population density is a fraction of Metro Manila's. Now imagine that same force, magnitude 7.2, striking directly beneath the most populated metropolitan area in the Philippines. Five Olsies has conducted extensive studies simulating what would happen if the Marikina Valley Fault ruptured today. The results are devastating. Estimated casualties, 34,000 deaths. That's the official FIVOLX estimate based on current infrastructure, building codes and population density. But that's just deaths. The number of injured is estimated at over 100,000. People trapped under rubble, crushed by falling debris, burned in fires, traumatized by the disaster. Buildings would collapse. 
Fivolx estimates that 40% of residential buildings in Metro Manila are not built to current earthquake standards. Older structures, particularly in Manila, Quezon City and other long-established areas, would suffer catastrophic damage. High-rise buildings in Makati, Bonifacio Global City, Ortigas and other business districts would sway violently. Modern buildings are designed to flex, not collapse, but interiors would be destroyed. Glass would shatter. People inside would be injured or killed by falling objects. Infrastructure would fail. Roads would crack and buckle, especially near the fault line. Bridges could collapse, cutting off escape routes and emergency access. The entire transportation network would be paralyzed. Water supply would be cut. The Angat Dam and other water infrastructure could be damaged. Pipelines would rupture. 13 million people would lose access to clean water within hours. Power would go out. Electrical infrastructure would fail across the metro. Hospitals, emergency services and communication systems would be crippled. Fires would erupt. Gas lines would rupture. Electrical shorts would ignite fires. With roads blocked and water systems failing, firefighters would struggle to respond. Large sections of the metro could burn uncontrolled. And this all happens in the first hour. Aftershocks would continue for days, weeks or months. Every aftershock would threaten already damaged buildings. Rescue operations would be constantly interrupted. The psychological toll would be immense. Economic impact? Five Volks estimates over 2.5 trillion pesos in damage. That's roughly 35-40% of the entire Philippine GDP. The economy would be devastated for years. The last time the Marikina Valley Fault experienced a major movement was in 1658, over 350 years ago. Historical records describe a powerful earthquake that caused significant damage in Manila. Geologists estimate that major faults like the Marikina Valley Fault rupture every 400 to 600 years. It's been 367 years since the last major event. Does that mean it's overdue? Not exactly. Earthquakes don't follow strict schedules. The fault could rupture tomorrow, or it might not rupture for another 200 years. But the longer the time since the last major earthquake, the more pressure is built up and 367 years is well within the range where another major rupture is geologically plausible. Five Volks is clear. The big one is not a question of if, it's a question of when. Metro Manila is the political, economic and cultural heart of the Philippines. 13 million people live here. The government, major corporations, media, infrastructure, all concentrated in one seismically vulnerable area. If the Marikina Valley fault ruptures, the entire country would be affected. Not just Metro Manila residents. The government would be paralyzed. Malacanang, Congress, the Supreme Court, most national agencies, all located in Metro Manila. The chain of command could be disrupted. The economy would collapse temporarily. The Philippine Stock Exchange, major banks, corporate headquarters, all in Metro Manila. A catastrophic earthquake would trigger economic chaos across the entire country. Ports and airports would be damaged or destroyed. Ninoy Aquino International Airport could be severely damaged. The port of Manila could be rendered inoperable. This would cut off the country from international trade and aid. The psychological impact would be profound. Metro Manila is home to millions of overseas Filipino workers' families. The disaster would affect Filipinos around the world. So what can be done? Five Volks has been advocating for preparedness for years. Building codes have been updated to require earthquake-resistant construction. Earthquake drills are conducted in schools and offices. Awareness campaigns run regularly, but the reality is that most of Metro Manila is not prepared. 
40% of buildings don't meet current standards. Many Filipinos don't have earthquake survival kits. Evacuation plans are incomplete. Emergency response infrastructure is inadequate for a disaster of this scale. The government has a big one response plan. It involves pre-positioning supplies, coordinating emergency services and establishing protocols for disaster response. But even the best plan will be overwhelmed by the scale of the disaster. International aid would be critical. Japan, the United States and other countries would likely send rescue teams and supplies. But aid takes days to arrive. The first 72 hours would depend entirely on local resources, and those resources would be stretched beyond capacity. Individual preparedness is essential. Every household needs an earthquake survival kit, water, food, first aid, flashlight, radio, important documents. Every person needs to know what to do when the shaking starts. Drop, cover, hold on, stay away from windows, don't run outside, Protect your head and neck. Every family needs an emergency plan. Where to meet if separated. A contact person outside Metro Manila. Evacuation routes. Buildings need to be retrofitted. Older structures should be inspected and reinforced. Heavy furniture should be secured. Emergency exits should be clear. But even with perfect preparation, the big one will be devastating. That's the hard truth. The Marikina Valley Fault runs beneath Metro Manila. It's capable of a magnitude 7.2 earthquake. Five Volks estimates 34,000 deaths, 100,000 injured, and over 2.5 trillion pesos in damage. It hasn't ruptured in 367 years. Pressure is building. The next major earthquake could happen any time. 13 million people live in Metro Manila. Most are not prepared. Many don't even know the fault exists. The big one is not a myth. It's not scaremongering. It's geology. It's science. It's inevitable. When the Marikina Valley fault ruptures, Metro Manila will experience the worst disaster in Philippine history. There's no way to prevent it. But preparation can save lives. Are you ready for the big one? Does your family have a plan? Do you have supplies? Do you know what to do when the shaking starts? Let me know in the comments. And if you want more videos about earthquake preparedness in the Philippines, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because the big one is coming. The only question is whether you'll be ready when it does.